rims against Stewie in a one-on-one. -on -one. 11 seconds. He can't get to the ball. It's not oh! possible! It's not possible! That is impossible! Oh my god! He's a walking montage! He's a walking montage, people! Hello, hello, and welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Marissa, this right here is Zurich, and today we've got our crosshairs firmly set on not one, but two amazing FPS tournaments to dissect because, man oh man, this weekend was busy on nearly opposite sides of the globe. We had CWO London and then I am Sydney and both were insane. Insane. The crowds were both popping mm. everybody the crowd was its own entity on top of just like the entire tournament mm -hmm. there was a lot of storylines that we have to follow can't wait to talk about those Ugh. obviously so i know i'm so excited so we'll get right into it but you down with starting with some call of duty of course mm. let's do it okay well while we call up our lovely guests to talk all about the craziness in london why don't we relive some of it together with these highlights Still very much alive. Fonzie now going to get challenged. Oh my goodness gracious me! That's it. He has a family. She's finding the kills. The time is just simply against them. They're going to slide in with 0.3 seconds left on the clock. It's a 7v9. They still can do it, but they need to stay alive. They're going to stay alive. TJ's on point. He gets dropped. They're back and forth. Enable with two. 0.3 seconds left. Dash is there. The lives are all out. But 100 Thieves are still on the point. It's They're holding on. Five to three, a hundred thieves now with a chance to capture the point. Optic, they got three lives left to do this. It's going back and forth. It all comes down to one. Hundred thieves have done it. As you throw your microphone on one oh, versus the whole two box versus shot. I threw it all. He's able to find one now on one versus one. He's running correctly. It's simp. But now we're going to see. Round number three, and we see Method Sick invest in that crack slam, and that's going to give him streaks as well. He's looking for more, and Method Sick picks up four. What a start from him. Gets picked off by an ICR, and the 5v4 has turned into even more. Players falling one by one. Nagathan, though, trying to make things a little bit interesting, and he's able to find two with the help of Mox, but now players are flanking. Nagathan's got a three oh, four. No. Mox is still there for the help. Now, all of a sudden, it's going to Nagathan with the strike is on another level. Oh. You have to make a decision yeah, if you're happy. They are so trapped in, and there's the flick, and there's the house arm! What is that shot? Are you kidding me, Sim? And they did manage to put him on the streaks. Wait a second, wait a second. They've managed to get in. Surely Midnight with no spree spawns remaining can't do anything here, but they are pushing right into it. How on earth has this happened? How on earth? Two versus two, they've now got to go, and he goes for the trade. Gorgonaut running, trying to get it. Sim takes it one versus one. How on earth? Five versus Sim, but he gets it! Midnight end up taking the control. The strap wasn't there for us. Oh, oh my God! But that he's a walking not... montage. He's a walking montage. People sit behind his war machine. Did he break? He's only gonna get find one and get taken down. But the trades, they're coming through. Can he know with the headshot? They're in the hard point. Just two more points needed. There's no contest, and we've got a new champion. It is what Iron Thieves been doing. Lift that trophy high, 100 Thieves, because my goodness, did you earn it. Now, to talk to us all about CWL London, welcome to the show, the very talented Katie Bedford. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited to have you. Yes. Uh, so excited to watch that event fold out in London. My goodness, that crowd was insane. The atmosphere at the venue, mm -hmm. the chanting, the beach balls, the jokes, the jeers, <laughs> crazy support for FaZe, Reciprocity, and Denial. So talk to us about what it was like to actually be in London for this tournament and just soak in that crowd. You know, it was, I never experienced something quite like it. And I had talked to Benson about what the crowd was going to be like before we went there. And he was spot on. I mean, there was so much passion, so much energy. We had that that uh, that that ball actually back in the green room. And then we, I'm not sure who brought it out into the crowd, but they loved it. I mean, they started a chant to pass it to Glaster at one point, And he got up out of his seat and threw it into the crowd. It's just, there was so much passion there that I want to see that everywhere. I mean, again, there was, there was jeers, there was booze, there was cheers, there was a proposal to talk. Yeah. There was just so much stuff that happened. But but really, that, uh, I think, 
I think we're going to come away as one of the most memorable, if not the most memorable event of the season, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so there's so many positives in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Now we have to talk about the, the reps, the EU yeah. and UK reps, mm -hmm. going out pretty right. early in the front of the crowd, as we just mentioned, reciprocity, 7th, mm -hmm. 8th, phase 9 to 12, and denial, 13th to 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, what caused the UK boys to falter despite playing in front of their home crowd? Is this mm -hmm. a home crowd disadvantage? Yeah, another. Yeah. I definitely, I don't think it's a home crowd disadvantage. I would think if anything, that would hype them up more because maybe some of them for the first time had their parents in attendance to be able to watch them play. Mm -hmm. But I think what's actually happening here is that this year there is a ton of competition mm -hmm. all at a very compact, similar level. It's not like there's one or two teams that if you get lucky and you don't have to face them, you'll do well. There is a lot of tough competition. And I mean, you can look again, you have teams like Luminosity Ga Gaming that placed in the same kind of bracket that they did. And Heretix, of course, getting that top six did really well, but there's also always going to be that barrier that these teams, if they aren't in the pro league, simply don't get the same practice against the 100 Thieves and the Optics and the Splices of the world that they might otherwise. So that's always going to be a challenge for them. But certainly, I mean, Heretix and Reciprocity, they didn't do bad by any means. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I mean, we should we should bring it back to Hundred Thieves though, because they were the well, they were the boys lifting that trophy high. They're on a warpath after a disappointment in Fort Worth, and Octane was named tournament MVP. So, how have they improved since their rough start to pro league, and now winning the org's first open title? Well, you know, you could see how excited Matt Nadeshot was for the very first championship title for 100 Thieves as an organization to go to Call of Duty. It was just wonderful for them. But I think when they started out here in Pro League, at the Pro League qualifier, when they when they had Pharaoh on the team, they were disjointed. There was no chemistry. They weren't working together. It wasn't a talent issue. They were all extremely talented players. They just weren't meshing well. And of course, they barely qualified at Pro League qualifiers. And then they go on and they make a switch. They bring in pre Priesta and they bring in Crowder as their coach and something about that just made them click I mean you watched it happen in real time whether it was having the coach having Priesta in a different dynamic between those players they started firing on all cylinders and especially of course Fort Worth was heartbreaking it was that what if moment that I think we kind of had answered at London the what if of well would they have won and you see them go on in London and they did just that so I, I really think it goes to show how a potential switch in a roster and and bringing on a coach can can really turn a team around yeah that uh, that's very apparent in a lot of esports but we have yeah. to move on to EU, e united mm -hmm. made it also to mm -hmm. the finals carried heavily by young guns like simp and abizi mm -hmm. went on a long losers run after falling to 100 thieves in winners round one uh so talk to us about simp's performance and utter lack of nerves he showed in the first time on a big stage well, it's, I mean, Simp did what we were all hoping that he could do. Of course, everyone leans in and goes, okay, you know, this is an amateur who has moved up onto the big stage, onto the, into the pros, and is he going to be nervous? Is he going to choke at his first major tournament? And that answer resoundingly was no. Simp <laughs> was unreal. I mean, watching him play, we were all sitting there like, are you real? Absolutely. Are you a robot? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just, sometimes you look at the kill feed and it was just all synth, mm -hmm. just all synth the entire time. And so really an incredible, incredible debut from him. I know, you know, everyone has to be very proud of how he did. And E United, again, that loser's run, very, very impressive. Tough to see them fall again at the end. A best of five, two best of five, rather, in that grand final. Would have been tough to overcome considering how hot 100 Thieves was playing. Mm -hmm. But Simp, I mean, you couldn't, you, you couldn't ask for a better debut from him unless they had won. So now how excited are you guys at the desk with this growing rivalry between 100 Thieves and United? So I think that's really exciting. I mean, there's kind of a couple storylines that are beginning to grow and unfold here. A lot of them are in their infancy. Of course, you have 100T and United, you have 100T and Optic, you have a couple different things. FaZe Clan's back in the mix, so you have FaZe and Optic again. But I, I think with 100T and United, um, it's a little too soon to tell, certainly. There is the dynamic of kind of Clay talking a little bit of smack early on with Kenny before they'd swapped out, when, actually when they had just swapped out Pharaoh, and then them coming back and taking E-United down in London. So certainly there's storylines there, but I would say it's a little bit early to call them concrete rivalries. We have to uh, move on to another team mm. that kind of fell flat, Splice. This is their first right. top three miss mm. in uh, Black Ops 4 so far. They didn't quite look 
uh, like themselves after the upset loss to Heretics. Right. So from your perspective, what went wrong with Splice and how can they bounce back heading back to Columbus mm. and the Pro League? Well, I think it's interesting that you mentioned that this is Splice's first top three miss because we've actually seen something similar out of both Optic and E United. You know, Optic gets first at Vegas, top 12 at Fort Worth, and then third in London. E United gets second, top 16, and then second. And Splice, of course, following that same kind of trend. It's like you have these core teams that are performing really well, and then they just seem to have one event where they just don't show up. And, and that kind of is what happened to Splice. And I can't obviously speculate too much on what was going on behind the scenes, whether it was chemistry or anything else. But, it, but tournaments can be very forgiving. If you drop down into the loser's bracket and someone's having a bad day, or maybe you just you just aren't clicking the way you usually do, mm. then it's unforgiving. One more loss and you're out. And unfortunately, that is what happened to Splice. But the core of this team is extremely strong. I mean, I mean, you have people like Temp and Looney, excellent, excellent players. So we'll see again once we get back into pro league uh, where they start going from there. Yeah, it would, nice, it would be nice to see them shine a little more. Uh, Envy, we need to talk about because they had a strong run. Started slow, one and two record in groups. They beat E6, Spy, LG, and Gen.G in losers bracket. So what like what exactly was the roster move to bring in Pharaoh and decimate and do you think that was the right choice for Envy looking forward? Well, based just off what we've seen in London, it certainly seems like it was the right mm. choice because they have much more slaying power than they did before. Of course, they did have people like Apathy, who was a two-time champs winner. He is an excellent player, no dispute. But he just wasn't necessarily showing up for the team. And now that you have Decimate and Pharaoh, their slaying power as a whole, coupled with Hook, has increased dramatically. They moved, of course, Aix over to the main AR role. Mm -hmm. And they only had a couple weeks of practice. I think that's important to point out, too, because they went from a top 12 at Fort Worth to fourth place in London. So that's mm -hmm. definitely a big step up for them. And I think this team, if they get more time together, more practice together, they certainly have the potential to be very, very scary and very competitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking about other roster moves, uh, what do you think is the future of FaZe mm -hmm. and Evil Geniuses going back to the Pro League? And can they improve upon what they've built during the first half of the season? Uh, I definitely I definitely think they can. Of course, FaZe is coming in. They, they took over Red Reserve's slot. So it's great to have them back in the league. They're definitely a staple name. So it was a little odd to have them missing for the first bit after they failed to qualify, pro league qualifier. But you have a lot of people there. Scraps, you have Zuma. The, the talent there is zero. Of course, Celium, Asim. They're all there. They're all very good players. But again, much like what I said with Envy, this is a new roster that's learning to play together. They're, you know, they're, they're finding their footing, if you will. So there's certainly potential. And I would say same thing with Evil Geniuses. That's a little bit more of a disjointed roster. Of course, you have Attach, JCap is back, uh, Exotic. But again, these are all rosters that have just formed. Mm. So will they be able to see success like Envy has and moving from a top 12 to a fourth place will remain to be seen. But it's exciting because a lot of these teams will get their first debut at Pro League. Well, speaking of rosters, I want to talk about you, Katie. I want to talk about your addition to the CWO roster, uh, just crushing the desk. My goodness, mm -hmm. you Thank ever you. make me proud just watching <laughs> you up there. So tell me about your experience just getting into it. And I feel like this must have been such a visceral moment for you to step into like your first LAN that first mm -hmm. time and just experience all of this. Uh, so honestly, it's just been a wild ride. Mm. You know, people say that if you if you do something that you love, you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel. I knew going through the interview process, I thought that this is what I would love. And now that I'm doing it, I know that it's what I love. I don't wow. feel like I'm going to work. I'm surrounded by a family of the other personalities and members of MLG that I absolutely adore. They've become such fast friends. Same with the players. I love all of them. And it's it's been such a welcoming community. It kind of blew me away. Because, you know, people can be a little hesitant at first. They can be like, who are you? You yeah, know, yeah. you haven't necessarily been in the scene. So who are you? And they embrace me with open arms. And I'm I'm smitten with Call of Duty, uh, <laughs> Call of Duty World League. I love everyone. It's just, I'm, I'm very thankful to be here. Well, we are smitten with you, that's for sure, just watching you do your thing. So I guess what you're saying is you are not the cod burner. Oh, well, you know, you can neither confirm or deny, mm. but <laughs> I would say I'm a little too new to be the cod burner. Fair enough, Kitty. Thank you so much for taking the time to call in today. We really appreciate it. Keep killing it as per usual on the desk. We'll be watching. 
Thank you so much, guys. Yes, Katie is blessed, and it's so sweet to see how much love she's getting from the community. I yeah, love that. She absolutely killed it in the desk, so I mean, can't, she did amazingly there. So, There's no I mean, reason not to get love mm -hmm. when you crush, am I right? But Zurich, we must move on now. Mm -hmm. Are we ready for a little CSGO? We gotta shift gears to the other tournament this weekend in the land down under. I'm sorry, that was bad. We'll be diving into another amazing guest in just a second, but for now, let's check out some of the best moments out of Sydney. Will Mouse Sports even give him that opportunity as they start to filter their way onto the bomb site all together? But they're peeking the wrong angles. Cold Zera has a chance now. Two have fallen, and it's on to Froze, and he gets the job done. Cold Zera! What is that? So well, he's not flicking, he's not panicking, he's lining up the shots and he's smoking them, but so are the double ups on the T side. Twisted, JW, and Twist has gone over to the oh, end. Oh, right. He's done it! seconds, he has! He's got round 14 and he confirms it by adding insult to injury on JW. Kerrigan so low, he does well to find one. Rocks. To find four, oh, he's got two. Oh, oh, oh. Is he aware that oh. there's a second on the flank though? I'm not sure. Get through that doorway and he might not have to worry about it just yet. As he backs up, it becomes a pair, but it doesn't even matter. It's Lagia down. He's got three from four and he's looking oh. for Gobby at range. And Yanko, can the man himself manage to find a 1v3 clutch? It starts off okay. He gets circuit daps down very low, finishes off both of them. And is the impossible going to happen? Tarek starts to push his way on forward. Yanko by just clutches out, not quite. Needed the headshot really at the end of the day. He doesn't have a kid. Yanko's won it when he made that movement, they wrapped him behind him. That closed the distance faster than they would have liked to exist. He's still in the smoke, one! He hit Tarek on that, look at him go! Got three, and Bob's not planted four seconds. Ethan can't get to it. They've stolen the round, there's no time. No confidence on the spray, they're very similar in that regard. I have no answer for oh. KW, back 10 to two! Surf tries desperately to get the shot back through the smoke, but that leaves him in the open and vulnerable. Three down, and two to five, make it just one, JW with four! Grims against Stewie in a one-on-one. -on -one. 11 seconds. He can't get to the bomb. It's not oh! possible! It's not possible! That is impossible! If Nitro can cause enough distraction, this could be absolutely everything. Elise has... No, he's missed the first shot. Oh, and the no. spray as well! No. Elise, no, not like this! He's got the CZ and he's gone. It's all on to JW. Smoked away and it's done finally! And you can forget Blast. You can forget Pro League. You can forget Chicago. You can forget New York. You can forget ECS, forget them all because I hear it's finally liquid. Liquid are your winners, but man, oh man, the real winners was the crowd, right? Uh, also us. We are the winners too for watching all that. What a scene. And to talk to us about Liquid, the crowd, and so much more, please welcome it in chat by spamming those sad Evans. It's our man, Evan Patrell. How's it? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on the show again. Yeah, of course. I mean, now he's like happy Evans, so it contradicts the sad Evans in mm -hmm. chat, but it's okay. okay. I like the juxtaposition yeah. of Evans. Let's get into it here with you, babe. Uh, I am Sydney was amazing it's always amazing this year obviously no exception competition between sydney and cwl london though was mm -hmm. kind of popping i know you said some of that but what makes the australian crowd so special when it comes to the large events like this one the australian crowd they're having their own event while the event's going on and that's <laughs> that's the best part about sydney you're sitting there you're casting you're getting hype over the round and then in this lull you'll hear a scream from the crowd you'll turn around it has nothing to do with the game. They're stacking pizza boxes. Like, <laughs> it's it, it's been ongoing for so many years in Sydney where the crowd is just their own event. And I think that's what makes it the best thing is these guys truly just love being there, not only for Counter-Strike, but for the camaraderie between them. And the Australian crowd, I mean, time and time again, they've proven why. It's one of the best events in esports. So. You put it up there on the board in esports. Yeah. E yeah, I really like how it's kind of more a, a it's it's not a super competitive feel. It's more like it's it's kind of its own thing. Right, I am yeah, Sydney is, is is kind of its own thing. But we got to move on to the winners. Mm -hmm. uh, Liquid yeah, won it all. Second tournament win of 2019 yeah. after the I buy Power Masters. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. for that team, it kind of felt like it was only a matter of time before they get another you know big win. Mm -hmm. What helped them get back to the level that we expect them to be at? Uh, we. With the way Liquid's playing right now, they've been second place in the world for a very long time. Nobody's actually been able to keep up with them. Yeah. So the fact that Astralis wasn't at this tournament was almost a shoe-in for Liquid to be the favorites. And I mean, they came out, they played hard. The finals for them 
looked pretty good. Of course, Fnatic, they're, I think they're ranked around 10th in the world. Maybe after this tournament, they pushed up a little bit. But Fnatic would have been, you know, a lower tier team in comparison. But, and that's what kind of committed Liquid to this win. I, I expected Liquid to win. It looked like the only other team I thought that might take out Liquid would have been MIBR. But they, of course, lost to Liquid for Liquid to go to the finals. And, I mean, that's the way the... That's the way the cards played out. Liquid had a phenomenal tournament. It just really sucks that Astralis wasn't there for Liquid to have that challenge to take that first place spot. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Fnatic there, and they've had a massive few months after an early exit at the Katowice Major. They had to work so hard for it, only to fall just short. So despite the loss, can Fnatic be satisfied with this performance as they move forward with the roster? Yeah, I definitely think so, just because they're such a young lineup. Um, when you're looking at the Fnatic lineup, you have Brawl and you have Twist, those are two very young players on that team being led um, by some phenomenal older players or senior players or veterans in the scene, whichever way you want to put it. Uh, it's a stepping it's a stepping stone for the Fnatic. This is kind of their moment to know, hey, we can compete with the best. They took Liquid to all five maps, and it just shows the potential that this lineup has if they don't change anything and they keep moving towards the goal of uh, taking that first place Spot. We probably saw one of the craziest matches in CSGO history in uh, Fnatic versus NIP there. Mm -hmm. Where do you think does that uh, match rank against all the great time matches in Would CSGO? Would you say it's the greatest? Yeah, the greatest. Because, I mean, there was yeah. a lot of talks on the desk about being it, uh, that match being the greatest match of all time. It was definitely a heated match back and forth. Even that last round that Forrest ended up closing out to get to overtime, it looked like he was going to lose it, and all of a sudden some great shots from him. I wouldn't even call them great shots, but like he completed the shots that he should have hit in the first place, and I'm sure anybody will tell you the same thing. It, it was one of those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, Forrest is whiffing, and then all of a sudden he just pulls some greatness from out of his pocket and he makes it happen, takes it to OT. Of course, Nip did end up losing the match, but I think the reason that it was such a good match was because it was so back and forth. Throughout that match, nobody really pulled away for a great lead. They were always battling back some great highlight plays from everybody. It's definitely in my top five of all time. Well, we gotta talk about top five here because NRG, they actually make top four. Tarek predicts top five in HLTV <laughs> ranking soon. soon. So what do you think of NRG showing in Sydney and what is their potential to challenging Liquid as the best team in North America? I definitely think it's a little bit of a long shot for NRG right now. I think as we move towards the end of the year, there'll be more, there'll be more chemistry between the players, more cohesion, they'll be able to play a little bit more smoothly together. But for right now, that top five spot for NRG is kind of out of sight for them, uh, just because of the caliber of teams they're playing again. Most of the teams that are in the top five have had a four that's been together, or had four members that have been together for such a long time, only really pulling out the one or two members. For NRG, with the addition of Tark plugging in that fifth member, now they're gonna see their potential rise. And I do imagine they'll hit one more plateau where they'll have to make another change just before they get into that top five. I definitely think it's in the cards, but it's still a little bit far off. Gotcha. Oh, we got to talk about um, other the, another team that also kind of had a roster swap. Mouse, uh, first that was our first good look uh, with the new roster with mm -hmm. Kerrigan, Woxic, mm -hmm. and Frozen. Uh, what's your read on this new look on the, this new roster, and how can these young guns on the squad flourish under Kerrigan's leadership? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's a huge question. I mean, Kerrigan, when he came to Envy, he was underperforming. I mean, everybody saw the underperformance out of Kerrigan, and everybody kind of thought, that's it for this guy. Um, he came to Envy, didn't play too well. You know, he's an older player. He's probably done with the game in a, in a year, maybe. He, he's on his way out. But then he goes to Mouse Sports, and once he gets to Mouse Sports, it's like a complete turnaround, complete 180 from him. He played phenomenal through IEM Sydney. Most of the rounds that Mouse Sports, you know, were in a do or die situation, Kerrigan stepped up big. And now with the addition of Woxic, who's a phenomenal player himself, and Frozen, this young 16-year-old fragger that throughout the tournament showed why he belongs on a lineup like Mouse Sports. I definitely think looking at Mouse Sports going towards the end of the year, they're going to be a scary team for almost any organization to go up against. I like those words. Mm -hmm. Scary. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Aussies at the event. Renegades out in groups, Chiefs out early, Greyhound upset FaZe and barely lose to FNC. We had three hometown reps, but sadly none of them made it to the playoff bracket. Talk to us about Chiefs, Greyhound, and Renegades and their performances at this particular tournament. Well, Chiefs and Greyhound aren't really considered a top-tier Australian mm -hmm. team, so Chiefs 
going out, nobody really batted an eye. They kind of expected that to happen. Um, when Greyhound takes up Fnatic, though, that's when I start taking a look at the Australian scene because a team like FaZe should be able to walk out the door with a win over Greyhound, but they end up losing. And right there, it shows the signs that, hey, these Australian teams have potential. They need to be exposed to more European teams so they can make their mark. Um, Renegades, bad tournament. That's all it was, in my opinion. I think that they just hit a wall. I think in front of the home crowd, hometown crowd, just too much pressure on them and they ended up folding. I definitely think Renegade is still a great team. I think if it was in any other continent, they probably would have got a top six finish somewhere in that somewhere in that vicinity right there. If not, maybe even going to the finals. But yeah, I think the hometown crowd wanting to put on a show for their, you know, the countrymen ends up getting them knocked out early, very early in the tournament actually. Mm -hmm. And and on the flip side, there was a little bit of silver lining, a little bit of light from the Australian team side with Greyhound ending up taking out FaZe. So even though they ended up losing all their members or losing all their Australian teams early on, we still see Greyhound take out FaZe, which for the Australians was a massive accomplishment. So I think I think it's pretty good overall for the Australian scene. Pressure was real, man. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's, it's almost like a home crown disadvantage. Oh yeah, that happens in Toronto all the time. We understand. <laughs> That's true. We, <laughs> anyway, we got we, game seven though. We got game seven against Philly. Uh, That's all. I'm saying. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, that's a monka ass moment there. <laughs> um, speaking of the Australian team, uh, what do you see the future for not just the Australian team but mm. also the SEA Oceanic region mm. uh, CSGO yeah. scene? What what needs to happen for the region to reach its full potential? Mm. So, generally, the SEA scenes have been more, or even Australia, well, Australia is just emerging as this CSGO powerhouse now. Mm -hmm. uh, they're coming up. It's going to be a couple more years, but you're seeing the change with IAM Sydney coming in. You're seeing how many people are going to fill those stadiums. You're seeing that cultural shift within the Australian market towards, you know, the FPSs, towards CSGO, towards esports. I think the difference between the Australian market and the Southeast Asian market is the Southeast Asian market primarily, in my opinion at least, it was more League of Legends, it was more Dota 2. Um, those were the games that were, you know, the high tier in the SEA market. But now with things changing, you're seeing CSGO being more adopted by them. You're seeing more teams emerging out of China, out of Thailand, out of Singapore, Malaysia. Um, and that's great. That's just showing that CSGO is encapsulating the globe here with, you know, the game itself. And I think that it's only a matter of time before we see, you know, the same attention given to Dota 2 and League of Legends uh, given to CSGO in the SEA market. Mm, Evan, thank you so much for calling in and sharing your insight. We cannot wait to see you back in Toronto real soon. Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, eh? <laughs> Oof, love that sad Evan. Spam more sad Evans in the chat right now. I need to see them. Uh, okay, so obviously that was a lightning round run through two incredible tournaments mm -hmm. that happened last weekend. Uh, so much to process, but we do need to talk about another pressing issue that seems to be happening in the CSGO community, just to bring it back to that. Um, the Blast Pro Series has been causing a little bit of an uproar within the scene, mm -hmm. only because there seems to be more and more tournaments and they promise more tournaments to come. Mm -hmm. But this also means less time for players and teams are committing to certain events over others. There's just a great divide seemingly happening now in the scene, so can you explain it? Yeah, it's a very peculiar situation mm. because at the, from like an audience perspective, the Blast Bros series is amazing, mm. very entertaining. The production is highest quality. Like I have so honestly good. never seen any other uh, eSport like have a, like that beautiful mm -hmm. um, broadcast. Like it is Lovely. so good. And of course, like the price pools are insane and absolutely, you know, it's almost like if you are a pro, you really can't miss it, right? But that is actually, contra they are contractually obligated to attend a certain amount of tournaments, yes. which is kind of, it kind of sucks because they have to then miss other major events because right. they have to compete in the Blast Pro Series. So there's there's like pros and cons to its existence. Um, the the community is upset because they don't they don't want to have as much Blast Pro Series events because mm -hmm. they want the teams to you know be more in the competitive state. Be more competitive because people are saying that Blast Pro Series is just not as a competitive like when it yes. comes to the overall competition scene, mm -hmm. it's not that difficult to play by comparison. Even though yeah. Australis will be there, like they skipped IEM Sydney mm -hmm. and they, and they also uh, were set to skip ESL Cologne as well, like because yep. they're contractually obligated now 
to the Blast Pro Series, but it's like, as an org, I kind of understand, well, you know what? I'm gonna go to where the prize pools are better. So right. if, if I am can't step it up and like mm -hmm. offer me more money, we're gonna just go with Blast. Like the production's great, competition's not that difficult. Yes. Like why not just rake it's, it in? It's almost free money for some of these top teams. It's, it's kind of ridiculous in yeah. that sense because um, again, the fans want to see them in a more competitive environment and more competitive settings and mm -hmm. Blast Pro Series being like predominantly best of ones yeah. makes it a little bit more wild, I mm. guess. So it's like you can't you can't play off your opponent's mistakes as much where mm. you kind of just have to throw all you got on that first game and hopefully you win, right. which of course creates an amazing audience spectator um, you know, eSport, yeah. but at the same time, it, from an actual competitive standpoint, right. it's a little bit more, you know, a lower tier. Lax. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I get the money thing, though, Zerk. We're going to dive even deeper into this next Friday, because mm -hmm. we'll talk all about this past weekend's Blast Pro Series, yes. of course. But now, I think that pretty well does it for today. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Evan. And thank you at home for lending us your eyes and ears. We'll be back next week with five more amazing days of shows. And until then, type exclamation point socials in the chat right now to check out our other links. We'll see you Monday. Thank you.